Hello artists. Today we're going to be painting our N is for Nightingale. Last week we used the letter N to draw his beak and then added all of the details. Today we're going to be painting him. The first part we're going to start with is the sky, but we need to set up. And so notice I have a painting paper, paint set, little bowl of water, napkin, and a paintbrush. We're gonna use a technique today in the background called wet on wet. So what that means is we need to make the paper wet before we make our paint wet. We're gonna dip in the bowl, wipe on the side, and the only part that we're gonna paint at first is going to be the sky. Be very gentle around the nightingale, try to stay outside of those lines, and then fill in the rest of the sky. If you notice, I'm going right over the music notes because the black Sharpie will show through just fine. Don't forget to get between his legs all the way to his tail. And then this part underneath where your name and class is, that is also part of the sky. So go right underneath the tree branch. You can go over your name and your class. Now my paper is wet. And the next thing I need to do is get the paint wet. Since these are water color, we always touch the water first before we touch the color. There's three colors you're gonna use today, the cool colors, purple, blue, and green. And those three colors are right side by side in your paint sets. Get the paint wet. It doesn't matter which color you start with. Remember we want a good hair day, so don't push hard. Very gentle, load up your brush. Now I have a nice water puddle and I can paint with the water puddle. Watercolors are supposed to be very light. I would say that's a little too dark. So if it gets too dark for you, just dip in your bowl of water and spread that dark paint to make it look light again. When you run out of one color, so I've run out of purple, I can rinse my brush, go for my next cool color. Make a water puddle. That's much better. That's a lot lighter. Rinse your brush, go to your next color. And even on your paint sets where they look a little empty, remember there's lots of paint build up around the edges. Just use that paint that's built up on the edges. Go careful around your beak. Every time you get ready to get paint, you have to get water before you get the color. And that's what it looks like after you use the wet on wet technique to paint the sky. Now we're gonna be working on our nightingale and the branch. Nightingales are brown. We also wanna do the wet on wet technique, but only for certain spots. So one place we're gonna put water on will be his belly. And the other place is just around his head. We wanna start off with just water on the head and the belly. Now we can use some brown paint, load up your brush, make sure you touch water color, and now paint. We actually want the nightingale to look tan. Tan is light brown, and so that's why I put water down first to make the brown look kind of light. Go around his eye, on top of his wing. Now for the wing and the tail, we want it to look dark brown. So this time, instead of putting water on the paper, we're just gonna put water on the paint and it will show up just a little darker on the wing. You still don't want it to be too dark. Watercolors are supposed to be see-through. We want to uh, make sure that the paint is spread out and kind of see-through for watercolor. And it doesn't take a lot of paint. I only dipped in the paint one time to get the whole wing and tail. 
I think that the body is still too dark. So another trick that I wanna show you is, um, I'm also getting some green on the bird. What you can do is take your napkin. You never wanna wipe your paper, but you can blot at it, and that will take some of the paint away in case two colors start to blend together or in case you get it too dark. And now I feel like that lightened his body up. So just by blotting your paper towel, you can help correct some of those mistakes. We're going to do the beak next, and you can use yellow or orange to do the beak. It's your choice. Again, get water first before you touch your color, and you really just wanna poke at the paper because it's so small. Oh, I got a little yellow on the head. So remember, just blot, just blot. And then the last color we're gonna to use today is black. We don't wanna to use too much, so I'm not gonna to touch the paint very long because you want it to be light, almost like a gray, or it's gonna cover up the bird's feet. If you accidentally get too much black, just use your napkin and blot at it. That's getting a little bit too much there, so just blot. And if you still need to thin it out, you can paint with just water and it will thin it out just a little bit. Oh, I'm looking at my bird. I forgot a spot. His legs, his legs are supposed to be brown too. And that's what a finished Nightingale painting looks like. When you are done, the whole painting paper needs to go on the drying rack, start on the bottom row, and the next artist can go above them and so on. Make sure you use the bottom of the drying rack. You can close your paint set and put it back by your sink in the watercolor basket. Make sure you put your dirty brush in the brush bath at your sink. Dump out your dirty water in your sink. And then you can take your napkin and if there's any water on your table still or on your fingers, wipe up before you throw it away. Good job today, artists.